Hello everyone and welcome back to my PhD life. If you're new here, this is Navjot Kaur and this family that we're making is a community to talk about PhD careers in research. How can you go about pursuing a PhD program and what all can you do henceforth? Again, my video has to start with a lot of thank you and gratefulness for all the viewers who have been joining the community, following the content, appreciating my effort and making it worthwhile for my time and energy. So thank you so, so, so much everyone who's been following the channel and sending me a lot of positive energy. It means a lot. So people who have landed recently on my channel and are going through my videos, I have talked about what a PhD program is, what all it involves, what does it look like to do a PhD, what does a day in the life of a PhD scholar look like, what are the kind of activities you undertake. Um, I also did two special videos recently on uh, modes of admission into the Indian Institute of Science, IIC Bangalore, for students who want to join IIC after 12th standard or bachelor's and for people who want to join IIC for a PhD after their master's or working professionals who want to do a part-time or a full-time PhD. Great, no more chit-chats about the past. Let's talk about what this video is going to be about and it's a very popular request that I've been getting by many students in the different groups that I post on LinkedIn, Telegram and they've been asking me about the direct PhD program. Though I have addressed a few uh, aspects of it in my video called what is a PhD program and if you haven't watched that you can find the information above and in the description box and you, if you have watched that uh, this video will be talking about the direct PhD program in full detail helping you understand how you can take admission in a direct PhD program what are the requirements that you have to fulfill and what do you get at the end of the program. So many people still get surprised when I tell them that it is possible to do a PhD directly after your bachelor's and you do not need a master's degree. And yes, that's possible and that is what is called a direct PhD program. That is what I did and that is what many students do these days. And those options are available in India and abroad. So if you're trying to make an international PhD application, even then you can apply for a direct PhD program. So how it works in India at IIC or some IITs and other institutions is that depending on which stream you are coming from, engineering or science, you will have some qualification exam that you will have to clear and get a good rank depending on which institute you are trying to get in, right? So for instance, for IIC, I wrote the GATE exam. Uh, I was bachelor's in chemical engineering and I sort of had an idea that I want to do my PhD in the department of chemical engineering. Or I also looked at which other branches, for instance, nanoscience or water conservation or energy. All these branches also took chemical engineering graduates and GATE exam uh, qualified students for admissions. So I decided to write my GATE exam in chemical engineering. Once I wrote the exam and the scores were out, I could make my applications on the online portals, admission portals of the institutes that I was interested in. And that is where you specify your past academic records, right? And for people who have just done bachelor's and then want to do a PhD, you simply mention your bachelor results and that should suffice. Once you clear the interview, you have enjoyed your moment of getting into the institute and the program that you wanted to. This is how the direct PhD program will work for you. So within the first two years, you would be expected to finish some mandatory coursework and that coursework would in involve two parts, some mandatory courses, which will depend on the department that you have enrolled in and some electives. This is how usually all academic programs work, right? So you're used to this lingo. And once you finish this mandatory coursework, which will be a given number of credits, for instance, at IIC, you have to do 24 or 27 credits and make sure that whichever institute you get in, you inquire that what is the number of credits you have to do to get a PhD degree and what are the extra credits that you have to do to get a master's degree in addition to the PhD degree. This is a very, very important point that you have to take care of from the beginning because later on, once you're done with your PhD and you apply for say academic positions and other government jobs, many job applications require an MTech degree as a qualification. But what happens is that students don't complete as many credits as they should to get both the master's and the PhD degree. And then later during their job applications, they suffer. So you make sure you find out what is the minimum number of credits you have to do. 
and you make sure that you finish those number of credits as coursework in the first two years of your program. Once you finish those, you become eligible to give what's called as the comprehensive exam or qualifying exam, depending on where you are positioned in India or outside. That is an exam which tests your understanding and uh, ability in the subjects that you had learned with the coursework that you did and what is your research plan going forward. Along with the coursework, you also start doing a little bit of research from your second semester and so on. So by the time you reach the end of the second year, you should have some database on the kind of work that you have done till that time and what do you plan to do with that project in future. So that is all is what is uh, evaluated in the comprehensive slash qualifying exam, also called calls in some countries outside India. And once you pass the comprehensive exam, then you are sort of a permanent uh, PhD scholar in the institute. People who fail to clear the comprehensive exam are given one more chance to reappear and clear the exam. And in worst case scenario, if you can't clear the exam still, and if the institute feels that you're not up to the mark, then you can be asked to leave the institute because they think that your work is not up to the standards. So uh, co the comprehensive exam or the quals is an important milestone for PhD scholars. And it's, you know, sort of a stressful period before your comprehensive exam and then a party day on the day of your comprehensive exam once you clear it. And after clearing your comprehensive exam starts your research journey in the PhD program where it's all research work, there is no coursework required. Of course, depending on the projects that you're working on, if your professor feels or you feel that there is some uh, course that you could take and that would help you do your research better, you're always free to do that in any of the universities that you're in. But the mandatory coursework is finished by then, the comprehensive exam is over and now you begin the journey of your research. Another uh, popular question that students then ask is that if you join a direct PhD program, will the duration of your PhD be longer than if you had joined after your master's? I haven't found that to be the case in my experience. I joined the direct PhD program and I, as I told in some of my recent videos, I just submitted my thesis a few months back and I've been able to wrap things up in roughly four and a half years. So I don't think not doing a master's uh, made my case uh, slow or made me take more time to finish my degree. It also depends on the institute that you're in. For instance, ISC expects high standard of research and the work that you do for your PhD. So even if you join after master's, you're expected to go through that rigorous training and produce valuable results, publications. And hence, you will need time to do that. So it wouldn't be the case that if you joined after master's, you'll be able to finish faster than someone who has joined after bachelor's. It purely depends on how hard you work uh, with a tad bit of luck in there because for many students, their projects just don't work. While for some, they struggle, but then eventually they are able to get things to work. So that's a little bit of luck factor there. But other than that, it depends on your hard work. It depends on how well you plan your degree, how well you plan your goals, uh, how dedicated you are to publishing and then what are the rules for graduation in the lab or the department that you're in. I guess I've covered all the details about the direct PhD program. Yes, 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 you can join a PhD program directly after your bachelor's. You don't need a master's degree. And if you finish the minimum required credits at the end of the program, you will get both a master's degree and a PhD degree. So make sure you get these details as soon as you get admitted or actually before getting admission to make sure that the program that you are joining gives you both degrees. As I said, it becomes a problem for apply applying to many jobs later. So make sure that you check this thing pretty carefully. Let me know if there's something that I've missed down in the comments section and I, I'll try to answer your queries or if it's a lot of information that I've missed, then I'll make another video on the topic. Hope you enjoyed the information. It was valuable and helps you make your future career decisions. Help me spread the word and help as many students as I can. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.